<laughs> well, if the eight non-league sides are in need of any inspiration, then look no further than Woking's famous cup win over West Brom 18 years ago. When Colin West headed West Bromwich Albion into a half-time lead over Woking, another non-league bubble was going quietly pop. But then Tim Buzaglo took charge. Goal number one for the striker who works with computers and plays cricket for Gibraltar. And the 2,500 to one outsiders from Woking making it look easy. Bazaglo's header made it 2 1. Remember, there's only one Tim Bazaglo. Crisp left foot shot, and it was 3 1. Here he is with the match ball. Say goodnight, Tim. Good night. Well, Tim Bazaglo's with us. Hello, Tim. Hiya. How are you Good. doing? I'm fine, thanks. Uh, thanks for coming in. Um, do you still remember that famous day clearly, then? Well, I get reminded of it, yes. Uh, yeah. It was the best thing that happened ever to me. Um, scoring a hat-trick. But th the best game for me was the Everton game. Yeah, because you played in, what, in front of so many fans? Yeah, it was different. Yeah, 35,000 we played in. We took 10,000 there, and we were only done by that one goal. Yeah, it's a funny... Go on, Laura, what you going to no, say? No, I was just going to say that his, his daughters are in the production office and, and when they were showing the clips before, they were saying, look at Dad's celebration. It's absolutely hopeless. <laughs> They've slaughtered him all day. Well, you've been practising that. You could have thought of a better one, come on. I didn't know what to do. <laughs> yeah. And to, you know, score three times and have three celebrations is... I don't celebrate anyone, I thought. <laughs> yeah. But come on, 18 years on, can you remember who passed to you, where you were and... Or does he need reminding by looking at those pictures? No, I think Derek Brown gave me the first two yeah. through ball. The second one was a header, and the third one was a... I don't think you show it in full, but the third goal was a very good move. Yeah. Uh, I think our sweeper started it and then carried on, and he passed to me, and I scored. But, am, yeah. I, am I right in thinking this is your first time back to TV centre since you were actually on Match of the Day? It is, yeah. yeah. Match of the Day, then back here again. Must bring back a few memories then. I was, yeah. But I was nervous. I was, Came out of the out of the ground and in a car and straight down here. So I had no celebrations after after the game with any of the players. Yeah. Straight down so we here. save you from a hangover. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> yeah. yeah. So right, yeah. After match of the day, though, did you? No. No, because I got back late. No, oh, I right. didn't do anything. No. Yeah. It's Finished interesting, it. really, because um, you know there are some non-league players when they hit the headlines, they love all the attention. You hate it. Yeah. I, did, I, didn't mind play, I didn't mind playing in the games, that's fine. The Everton game's fine, the West Brom game was fine. But you, in a way, you were quite relieved that you lost to Everton, so you didn't have to face so all the media. So I didn't have to do it anymore, yes, it was fine. But after the West Brom game, I went to work and uh, tried to get work done, but somebody had given somebody my work number. So I, I was just, every five minutes the phone was going, so I had to go home. Yeah. And then they were phoning work and they gave him my home number. So yeah. it's, it's, uh, it's just... Great excuse for leaving with it. The yeah. phone keeps ringing. Yeah, yeah. yeah I just got a hat-trick in the FA Cup. And, of course, you, you also played cricket for Gibraltar. I played for Gibraltar from... The World Cup. That's right, yeah, from 1982 to 2001. OK. 20 years. Mm. So what, cricket or football? Which one do you prefer? I prefer football at the end of the cricket season and cricket at the end of the football <laughs> season. Yeah, you can get bored. Good answer. Yeah. yeah. Big day for the non-league sides. Um, any surprises, do you think? Any upsets in the offing? I fancy Forest Green to beat Derby. Do you? Yeah. I think Derby in the same position we, as West Brom were, sliding down the table. Yeah. I think Forest Green got a great chance. And what's the secret, then, behind non-league team success against those bigger sides? What is to, it? You've got to believe in yourself. You've got to believe you're good enough to beat them. Because only 11, there are 11 players on that pitch, the same as you. Yeah. And when we played, we fancied our chance. We had West, we had West Brom watched five times. Yeah. And Jeff and Fred said, look, you can beat this lot. And you just believe in yourself and you'll do it. I mean, so did you have that self-belief on the day? Did you know? I mean, you went a goal down, didn't you? And then you scored your hat-trick in the second half. Yeah, we, did, we didn't deserve to go goal down, but Fred and Jeff had installed it into us that we'll beat them. So they haven't watched them five times. And at the back, there Roberts was coming to the end and Strodder, the, the young kid. Yeah. And uh, we deserved to win anyway. All right, fantastic. Great having you in. Thank you. Cheers, Tim. <laughs>